Thanks, Mark. <laughs> now you can start. It's better than being on YouTube. <laughs> So um, I'm going to get started if everybody's okay with that and um, call to order the meeting of the Charter Commission. We have a quorum here between us who are present in the room and those who are virtually with us. Um, and uh, we'll start with everyone saying their name. Jeanette asked that we call the roll essentially for purposes of the minutes. So, um, Marilyn, you want to start? We'll just go around the circle. Marilyn Hunter. Gary Douglas. Tyler Washburn. Denise Tepler. Peter LaPerry. Matt Abbott. Mark Waltz, this is in Delman. And Ed. Karen. That's Ed, Karen, Jeanette. Yes, thank you. All right, so that's all of us present here tonight. Um, and we will, and I have to say that our um, chair, Pam Heil, is really not well this evening. Um, so I am filling in for her. Oh, she's appearing momentarily. Oh, that's good. Okay, so she's just feeling up for that. Um, so let's um, do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, uh, it's. It's Pam. I just wanted to jump in really quickly, Denise. Thank you so much <clears throat> for sitting in. And I'm fading fast, so I'm going to probably leave. But have a great meeting, and we'll see you soon. Thank great. you. And Pam, I think I'll play your remarks that you made in your voicemail to me, to the whole committee, because I think that they're important. <laughs> Um, and it will, it, that will not be difficult with the phone and the microphone. Okay, well, just keep in mind that they're my personal thoughts. Um, so, you know, they, they throw them out for what's, what they're worth, but um, they're just my thoughts. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thanks. Um, all right. First on our agenda is public comments, but I don't believe we have any member of the public with us. Do we have anyone in the attendee list? No? We, we do not. So um, we will be willing if anyone comes on to take public comments at any time during the meeting. Um, I mean, maybe perhaps not in the middle of a conversation, but um, at the end of a conversation and before we begin another one. Um, so next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from January 26th and March, 20, uh, March 2nd um, from this year. And Jeanette sent those out. And if anyone hasn't seen them, I have copies with me. Um, I have a few corrections. I'm sorry, Jeanette, to do this in the public meeting. Uh, I just didn't have time to do it before we got here. I just, I just need you to tell me the date. Okay, well, the most important thing is that the date on the okay. final set of minutes, which were supposed to be March 6th, I believe, is Wednesday, February 16th. So we have two minutes from Wednesday, February 16th. And yeah. I, I so, think- So you probably did not receive my email from later this afternoon because I realized that I had overwritten a document. I had saved one document over another with the wrong name. And it's like, yes, mm -hmm. those are incorrect. So I sent out the correct March 2nd minutes around three or four o'clock this afternoon. I do not know if anybody has them um, or got them or has them available, but you're quite right. That was an error. You're absolutely correct. Okay. Are they different or is it just? Uh, they actually are different. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. haven't seen it. All right. Um, but I see that Carrie and Tyler at least have them. Um, I just put them up on the screen. Right. And then 
The other concern I had was that there are a few names that I know are um, incorrect in the um, meeting from January 26th. I would be delighted to fix those. Okay. Um, I, I believe Jim Burek's name is spelled incorrectly. Um, could somebody else help me with that? -R -K. Yes, it has a CK. Um, okay. And also, I know that Alan Sardinus is spelled S A R V I N A S. Oh, sorry. Give me that again. Alan Sardinus, his last name, that's on the second, second page of um, the comments. It's S A R V I N A S. V as in Victor. V as in Victor. Okay, thank you. And A S, not E S. Yep, thank you. Okay. And just to let you know, Jeanette Douglas is with two S's as well. Did I miss that? I'm sorry about that. Oh, yes, yeah, I did. I will fix that too. I, think, I apologize. Yeah. Oh, and Jim Byrne at 11 Jean Drive. Um, that's B Y R N E. And Jean has two N's in it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Does any, did anyone else notice any other minor typo issues or anything that they want to correct before we get to a pretty minute? Not on the 26th. Okay, on another date? On the new one that went out from Jeanette today, I appreciated the elevation of my last name. I went from Washburn to Washington at the very end, but the last name is Washburn. Okay, hang on one second. Okay. Hang on, hang That's on. That's not the first time it's happening. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no. I cannot tell a lot. No, wait a minute. Where are you? Oh, down at the end there. I see. Wash. Sorry about that. Okay. I will fix that. And thank you for noting it. Okay. Can I have a motion on the January 26th minutes, please? Who to accept? Second. I'm sorry. Who was that who moved? Tyler Washington. And the second came from Carrie. You know, she'll work Washington. <laughs> okay, and I do want to say, Jeanette, we really appreciate all the work that goes into this because it's not something I think most of the rest of us really want to do. So thank well, you actually, that. you know, thank you. And I don't I don't mind doing it, but I really do appreciate the corrections because especially like names, well. Mistaking Washburn is just pure error, but sometimes when there are public comments, I actually can't hear the names correctly. And so I definitely, most definitely appreciate it, as well as substantive corrections for anything I may have missed or misstated. So don't ever hesitate. It's just I'm wide open to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay, so it's been um, moved and seconded to accept the minutes of January 26th. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. We need to do a roll call. Oh, we right, need to do a roll call. All right, Peter. Um, all right, I will call the roll. Um, Marilyn Hunter. Yes. Carrie Douglas. Here. Tyler Washburn. Yes. Did you not vote then? I did just use like here instead of yes. Oh, I thought we were doing, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, Carrie Douglas roll. is. Oh, yes, I'm, yes, I'm a yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. So, okay. Okay. Um, Denise Tepler, yes. Peter LaPerry? I'm going to abstain. I didn't have a chance to read it. Either. Okay. And Matt Abbott? I'm going to just abstain. I haven't read it yet. Okay. So. And Karen? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I needed, I'm sorry. I could not get Matt's vote. Uh, I'm sorry. Matt's vote was? Abstention. Okay. Thank you. Both he and Peter have a chance to see them yet. Okay, and now we need a motion on the most. I'm oh, sorry, what? You didn't call Jeanette. To Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette. I'm a yes. Okay. You're a pain in the neck, Peter. We got but a I love you. We got a problem with the legislature, I would think. <laughs> we do things a little differently, not Roberts, you know. Um, all right. 
And then a motion to accept the rules of Jenna. So moved. Second. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second for uh, the minutes of March 6th, correct? Second. It's March 2nd, I'm sorry. Right. And who made the motion and who was the second? Uh, Marilyn and Tyler, I believe. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so let's go around again and um, see if any of us have read those. Yes. Okay. And Terry? Yes. Okay, Tyler? Yes, with the correction. I'm sorry, um, the correction of your name or some other correction? Just, just the name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm going to abstain because I haven't seen them. Oh, me too. I'm right. sorry, who was the me too? Was it Peter? Abstain. Okay. Peter and Matt also abstain. So three abstentions. And Ed, how do you vote? Yes, as amended. Okay. And Jeanette? I'm a yes. Okay, so five yeses and three abstentions. Uh, so the motion carries. Um, and we will move on to the next step. Um, yeah, and I am I am taking this to mean that these are approved as amended. I'm going to amend all yes, the names. Right. That's yeah. what I assume the motion for after we discuss the correction. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, number five on Pam's um, agenda is charter issues. And uh, the first thing she suggested we do is review the attorney's response to the question. So Mark, I was wondering if you could sort of do that with for us, talk about um, sure. the response from Bernd Sure about our questions. Uh, so we ended up, I talked to the attorney and he thought he could do dispatch with all of them and like, two to three hours. So we just had him answer everything as opposed to sending some things to MMA and some things to bring feature and stuff. Um, and so his directions were to tell us if these were things that had to have a charter um, or that couldn't be done at all or things that could be done with a charter or an ordinance. Um, so the first question we had was change the timing of the warrant release to allow more time for citizen review. And he said, yes, a charter could require additional time for review of the warrant articles before um, the select board votes to place the articles in a town meeting warrant and or additional posting beyond the minimum seven days required by main law. Although this could be accomplished through an amendment to chapter six of the code of ordinances as well. So this one could be done either way, the charter or the, board, uh, the code of ordinances. Next one was require an informational session to present information on warrant contents. Um, he said, this could be addressed through a charter or an amendment to the code of ordinances. Can you allow remote participation in a town meeting? Um, he said, remote participation in town meeting is not permitted under current state law and could not be changed by a charter or ordinance. Include a new business article at the end of town meeting, no votes taken, simply an opportunity for public comment, suggestion, or votes could be taken, but these items would be an expression of opinion um, only. His answer to that was articles or items not on a town meeting warrant cannot be added during a town meeting, but he sees no reason why you couldn't include a general discussion period at the end. Um, this would need to be addressed by a charter. Old town meetings more frequently as noted in the, uh, chapter six of our code. He says the charter provision is not required to hold additional special town meetings throughout the year. Can a charter be used to improve advertising of meetings? He said, yes, although this could and likely should be addressed through an amendment to chapter six of the code of ordinances. I'm sorry, can you repeat that last one? Um, so the question was, could a charter be used to require improvement of advertising? So find a better way to advertise the meetings. He said, yes, this could, uh, but likely should be addressed through an amendment to chapter six of the code of ordinances. Next question is related to the select board. Could we explore the creation of districts to better represent all areas of town? Um, you can have a standing committee created by a charter or ordinance, which would um, do this. Mm -hmm. Next question was, or next three, include requirements for allowing slash encouraging public participation in meetings, develop incentives to encourage people to volunteer, 
examine committee structures, including appointment versus election. He said all three of those can be done either charter by a charter or ordinance. Oh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> I think I jumped one. I skipped one page of this. Um, so let me back up for a second. When we first started on select board, explore the creation of districts to better represent all areas of town. He said this would require, require a charter. Next was should additional qualifications be established for anyone running for office? He said additional qualifications beyond the requirements outlined in main law may be established by charter. So that would be a charter for that. Is the current ethics policy sufficient or should it be strengthened and or applied to all committees, either through charter or town code? He said an ethics policy can be applied by a charter, code, or select board policy. Um, and he cited a, a law. Establish a very specific process, process for removal from office. He said removal from elected office can only be accomplished through one of the vacancy provisions outlined in main law, not acceptance, resignation, death, removal from the municipality, permanent disability or incompetence, failure to qualify for office within 10 days after demand, subsequent appointment to an incompatible office, et cetera, or through recall, either the statutory provided provision in, in main law or a locally adopted recall ordinance. Consider withholding pay for non-attendance at meetings. This should be established by a charter or ordinance. And he added, it is not clear if the town has a current ordinance provision that governs the pay of select board members. Next was, should the position of the board of selectmen chair be required to rotate? He said, this would be at the discretion of the town whether to rotate the chair. If the intent is to require rotation, this could be established by a charter ordinance or policy. Next questions related to boards and committees. Um, so the first couple of questions he addressed at once, they were, can ethics policies be developed for these groups? And some committees like the planning board are charged with developing their own policies and self-police as to adherence. Can an outside structure decide on policies and adherence and such policies be made universal across all committees? His reply was an ethics policy can be applied by a charter code or select board policy. Is it possible to add new standing committees? And he said, standing committees can be created by charter or ordinance. Next three questions he answered at once. The three questions were, can we include requirements for allowing slash encouraging public participation in meetings? Can you develop incentives to encourage people to volunteer? And can you, can you examine committee structures including appointment versus election? And to all three, he answered, this can be addressed by charter or ordinance. Next section of questions were the miscellaneous questions. Uh, first one was, can you include requirements for a timely response from the um, public uh, request officers to town question requests from the public? And Topsom shall appoint an officer in the first meeting of the select board after the special town meeting in November or within one month after vacancy in the position and shall note the name and title of the public access officer on the Topsom website in sections describing appointed officials, et cetera. He said this could be addressed through a town policy. Can you examine additional ways to require or use hybrid meetings? He said remote and hybrid meetings for boards and committees are permitted under the need site of the state law, but remote and hybrid meetings are not permitted for town meetings. Can you examine requirements, criteria and scope and applicability for citizens petitions he said any provision related to citizen provisions that deviates from general law provisions in main law should be addressed by a charter. There are certain could limitations. Repeat, could you repeat that one, Mark? Because that was another one. That's, there were only two so far that were just charter. Yeah. Um, so the question was, can you examine requirements, criteria, scope of applicability for citizen positions? So basically, I think the question was, um, could we change the way you could do a citizen petition or expand or and his answer was, any provision related to citizen petitions that deviates from general law provisions in main law should be addressed in a charter. There are certain limitations of what a charter can address, however, including the right for free circulation of petitions and qualifications for who may circulate petitions, i.e. any registered voter of the state. Next one was, can a warrant article allow the board to transfer budgeted funds from one department to another? For instance, from public works to general government, or must this be authorized in a charter? Charter. 
He said, this type of expenditure is typically accomplished the creation of a contingency account and an article authorizing the board to appropriate funds from unappropriate surplus as they deem advisable for certain unanticipated ex expenses or emergencies. There is no state law that requires a certain budget format. So as long as the article is specific enough, it can be drafted in a way to authorize the board to make certain expenditures generally and from other department categories and care should be taken to avoid any inconsistencies. So basically the answer to that is we can just have a warrant article that creates a contingency fund that could solve that problem. Next was to what extent can these issues be addressed through warrant um, town code ordinances versus charter? And he said basically he answered each one. Um, and then we had a question that came up from staff members about contract zoning, of whether you would need to have a charter to do contract zoning. He said contract zoning should be addressed through an amendment to the town zoning ordinance and not through a charter. Under state law, a municipality can vote to include conditional or contract zoning in a zoning ordinance for 30, I think we cited the statute. And that was his response. Thank you for going over that, Mark. I read it at the time, but it, it's good to, um, to hear it again and for the public to have an opportunity to hear those answers as well. What, can I ask why was the why did the planning department want to know about contract zoning? Right now, they're rewriting the zoning code in, yeah. in many ways. And sometimes you may have, rather than do an exception for a particular business, yeah. it can make it easier if you do contract zoning, so that way the exception only applies as long as that business is there rather than they can get permit or something. So there's not a there's not a specific um, project in mind right now. They just thought they wanted to know in the future because it might be easier if they had that. But it doesn't require a charter. So as I heard you speak, I heard really um, only two issues that we discussed that absolutely require a charter to make changes. One was if we wanted to add a general discussion period at the end of a town meeting, we needed a charter to make that um, change to the town meeting format. And the other one that I heard was if we want to make changes to the citizen petition law, we need to um, to have a charter for that. And so, Peter? Um, I basically heard two, <coughs> but this would be, the two I heard was creation of districts um, and additional qualifications uh, for anyone running for selectman's office. Yes, that's true too. I got the only that two one. that I really heard. That's the four I heard. So, so there would be four. Yeah. Yes, I think that's correct. Okay. Sorry, sure. what was that fourth one? I missed the fourth one. Requirements. If we wanted to add requirements to eligibility to run for office. Hmm. And um, oh, the, yes, okay. The new business, which would be a general discussion, and the citizen petition. And I'm sorry, what was the other one? Uh, Districts. 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 Thank you. Oh, there it is. Districts. Okay. So those are the four. Um, just comments or questions from the committee about any of those issues. I would just point out that, well, I think you're right. Those four require a charter. Uh, many others permit action by charter. Um, and the only other thing I, I noticed as I went through this, one of the comments that had come in uh, back in December actually from the public had been the question of whether it would be reasonable to elect planning board members rather than have them appointed because the scope of, and influence of their decisions is so great. Um, and I realized though, even though I thought that was missing, it really isn't because if you look at um, number three F, that one um, says examine committee structures, including appointment versus election, and that kind of includes that. So I thought it was missing and it isn't. And so we can, that's fine. And then also the other one that caught my eye was the contract zoning, which I thought, wait a minute, we didn't talk about contract zoning, but Mark just explained that. So we're good on that too. So I think now might be a good time 
to play Pam's comment because it was relevant to this uh, part of the discussion. I'm going to turn my phone up all the way and. Yeah, I'm sorry. You want to hit speaker, the little speaker icon? Yeah. And then hold the bottom of the phone towards the microphone. Sure. Sorry, it's acting up. I want to pull it back. Okay. We have someone who's looking to take a better phone. Can you one second? Can you hold it to the mic? I think that's all the. And Jeanette and Ed couldn't hear any of it, and I could only hear pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I will read what I've got here um, if, if everyone would like so you can hear more. But uh, Pam is talking about why she thinks um, charters are more democratic than policies or ordinances, basically. Um, she says, um, people may say that we can do that by policy or ordinance, but policies come and go. They're up to the select board and the department heads, and they don't get enforced evenly half the time. They change all the time. And ordinances are a little bit better, but they're adopted at town meeting, and they have to be put forth by the select board. So there's no guarantee that the citizens could have a chance to vote on something in particular because it may not come before them. Um, a charter, on the other hand, is everything in it is voted on by the citizens. It's proposed by citizens, it's voted on by citizens and the Board of Selectmen. I hope, um, I don't know why it says this, but uh, the process to change it is more difficult than an ordinance. Um, and ordinance, of course, can be repealed by town meeting, but uh, a charter cannot be as easily changed. It has to go through the whole charter commission process. So that would be my argument against relying on policies and ordinances for things that are truly important. And I think that's the upshot of what Pam was trying to say. Um, any thoughts or comments? Peter, go ahead. I sort of disagree with uh, this ordinance versus charter. 
of the <clears throat> to get a charter changed is a very big process. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get a charter commission um, elected. You have to elect to do it. Whereas an ordinance, um, to get an ordinance, we can do it, or a citizen can do it by petition to get it before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. As far as initiating an ordinance or changing an ordinance, that can be done citizens initiative. So it's not only up to the select board, um, depending on you know where it is, there might be a committee that can also um, bring forth an ordinance to go before the town meeting. And the fact that it um, gets voted on, instituted, and or changed, or even um, withdrawn or repealed, if it's no longer necessary, is a process for the town meeting. Whereas if something is in the charter and it needs, if it's outdated, it needs to be repealed, it can't be done without going through the whole charter issue. And then when you open it up, my understanding, you open up the whole charter, not just that issue. So the whole thing is up to uh, being changed. So it's kind of like a, uh... A conference of states. It's sort of like if you open up the Constitution of the United States, yeah. you can't do it for just one little bit. You right. open up yeah, the whole yeah, kit and kaboom. Right. Yeah. One of the things I got was you, the fact that if you do do it through ordinance, if you did it through charter, it could take up to 10 years, you know, with to process to change it if, if it needed to be repealed versus ordinance. I mean, it's not a. I, I'm not sure if that's. I'm not sure if that's true. I, I know by law we have to reevaluate them every 10 years, but I'm not sure if you have if you have to wait 10 years to change them. But at, by the same token, I mean everything that we've been looking at and discussed has already been told to us tonight that we can deal with it with ordinances and whatnot. So I'm not sure whether we want to go with the the restrictions of the charter anymore because uh, I mean as we heard or didn't hear from the public. They really aren't concerned with that. They do believe, but I did hear from those who I did that they can put anything we want into an ordinance. So, I mean, I don't know that we necessarily have to steer, keep continually steering towards the charter for that matter. I'm thinking at this point in time with what I've heard from the public, I'm more than happy to just, if we feel those uh, changes should be done, that we should initiate uh, the select board to, uh, take on those ordinance changes and, and put them through the process of town meeting, which is, of course, as we say, the most democratic form of government. So, Ed, um, you're suggesting that this committee suggest certain ordinances to the select board. Is that correct? What I'm saying is if we really feel that those things should be addressed, we could recommend a select board uh, send them to a, to the uh, a codes committee to look at those as a code and go through the process of just adding it into our codes, or, or uh, you know on on what we have existing. I mean, some of the things that we are we have on that list could very easily be added on or voted not at town meeting because do do we have a codes committee? Not specifically. All that, but I think if you wanted you as a committee you could say to the select board, here you could produce a report and say, here's things that some things issues that we think should be addressed, but perhaps would be better for whatever reason through an ordinance. Um, and then the select board could choose to set up a committee or task staff or to work on some of those things. And and, uh, that's, and also I, what I said, go ahead. Sorry, Ed, I, I just want to point out that that was in the, uh, what that happened in the report of the Charter Commission from 10 years ago. It wasn't the Charter Commission, it was the, uh, the committee that came out of the Charter Commission. Government Review Committee. Oh, the Government, government Improvement Committee. Yeah, Government Improvement Committee, yeah. Um, and maybe that's what we should do. Recommend any other way of Government Improvement Committee that actually will put ordinance board instead of just making recommendations. I didn't catch quite exactly what you had said. I was just saying maybe that should be 
you know, because that was the step that followed last time. Maybe that should be the step that follows again instead of us saying what's what. Right, it's pass weird. it on to, to somebody, you know, because uh, I mean, we're, our, our, we would come with, with uh, looking at a charter and if we need one, what form of government. We really right. have agreed already the form of government <coughs> being town, town meeting form. Uh, the other question is, do we really need a charter or can the ordinances deal with it? From what I've been hearing and what I've been reading on a lot of the uh, other stuff, the ordinances could handle it very well. And then, you know, I mean, by the same token, ordinances change easily, yes, but it's also driven by whoever's in charge on the board of selectmen. Like anything else, a Supreme Court, it's whoever's in charge is appointing these people to these committees. So, uh, you know, I think it's all part of that whole democratic process. So I think if we just put it into those concerns, if we really have them, we suggest they look at them as a code instead of going any further with the charter conversations. I guess my concern about that is that that has been suggested before and didn't happen. And that, um, and when I asked um, Dave why that didn't happen, actually, his response was, well, there wasn't anybody really pushing for it, so it didn't happen. And I, I, my fear is that if we go that route, we'll end up with the same result. And that's, I mean. But you're talking a different board and you're talking a different administration. None, none of the people that were here then or were here are here. But now. also that one is, of these issues true. that we had researched, you know, there was maybe only one or one person that mentioned a lot of these issues. That's and true. so I'm what I took away from our time with the public was an overwhelming desire to keep town meeting and very few problems otherwise that you know that there wasn't a big issue that people were unhappy with. There was a lot of small issues, you know, separately mentioned, but other than, you know, the form of government, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, there wasn't a theme. And I'm not a person who likes to, I, I just, I hate to see us make laws for a problem that doesn't exist just to make laws. You know, I'm, I'm not a person that does that. I've come to a place, you know, in all this and I, you know, I mapped it all out. There was only four issues that required a charter everything else could be taken care of nicely with either town hall or select board policy or amending the ordinances. Um, so at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we not move forward with writing a charter. Disband the committee. I'm very uncomfortable with accepting that motion tonight when our chair is not present. Um, and um, and I, mean, I, I, I think- but I think voting on that motion and deciding to disband or not to disband the committee tonight without our chair present is, um, yes, I would think it was just unkind, if nothing else. Um, well, and, and actually I have a comment as well, because although with all due respect, I do not agree because I think that many issues were raised by the public that related to communication. I mean, we take note of the fact that town meeting um, has been in existence since the town was incorporated in the uh, late 1700s. At that time, there were 890 or so people in Topsom. So we have decided, to, even though we have now rough cut about 10,000 people in Topsom, so we're taking, it actually turns out to be, we have 12 times more people right now. So we're taking an old form of government and we're saying, let's try to make it work with many, many, many more people. And I think that's why people commented again and again about communication. And people commented as well about ethics and people commented as well about the committee structures. And I think those things are really important. And I think, um, I think, it, I think it behooves us, given the fact that charters are typically only reviewed once Madam every Madam Chairman, um, Tyler, I have a point of order. Yeah, there's okay. a motion on the floor. There's a motion on the floor. That's true. We haven't gotten to discussion yet. I'm sorry. You're correct. Is there a second for Marilyn? I'll second this. Okay. Second so okay. Sorry, who, who is seconding? Peter O'Perry. Okay. Um, and Tyler actually uh, was had his hand raised, Jeanette, before you started to speak. So I'm going to ask him to say his piece, and then I will go back to you. To, to me personally, I think that we've been spinning our wheels around the same discussion for many of the meetings. 
I am right where Eddie Karen is. I'm right where Marilyn is. I think that we are getting to the point where, you know, it's time to make a decision. Are we going to proceed or not? I do hear what Denise is saying tonight. I do think that, you know, I, before we do anything else on this commission and invest more staff time, more of our time, I would like to know what's the consensus. I'd be more than happy to vote for this motion tonight. Equally, I wish that Pam could have been here. I wish she could have zoomed in. I don't feel comfortable waiting another month. I don't feel comfortable kicking it back. You know, if we wanted to schedule a special meeting sooner where the one item of discussion is, are we gonna proceed or not? I could go there. Equally, I think that, you know, town meeting form of government, in my opinion, has served Topsom well and it's 260 plus years. I think that town meeting form of government has served New England by and large pretty well. I think that a lot of the items that needed to be addressed by charter are items that I personally wouldn't be comfortable pushing forward on a charter commission that was passed on very low voter turnout. And with commissioners, I mean, truthfully, I received as many votes as Satan. Thankfully, I, as the right ends, thankfully, I was appointed by the support board. And, you know, I, I say this, but the, the highest vote getter, I think, was Eddie Karen with 60 votes. And that's still, you know, less than what most people attend town meeting at. And so for me, you know, I am firmly in the camp that it's time to have this discussion. I said that at the end of the last meeting, hoping that it could come up soon. And I'm comfortable with keeping town government the way it is. I hear what you're saying as well, Denise, mm -hmm. about previous things not being taken up. If, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, there is a town meeting committee on the books, correct? Correct. So hypothetically, part of a wrapping this up, if my idea, you know, or whoever's idea, maybe a, the selectmen could appoint folks to a town meeting committee with the intention to help garner publicity. That's something that hasn't happened in recent years. That'd be great. We could also come up with the idea of suggesting that the town recommend, we recommend to the select board, the creation of a government improvement committee again. I am very hesitant for me personally of stepping outside of what I believe my lane is. As a charter commissioner, my belief is, are we starting a charter or are we not? If the answer is no, that's kind of where we stop. The recommendations after that, as much as we may want to make them, aren't really in our bailiwick, but we could make the recommendation to the select board to get folks together that really want to flesh these out and have those discussions and what ordinances would be great and which ones aren't. But for me, you know, I will vote in favor of that motion. Most likely, I'm 99% of the way there. I'm going to listen to discussion. I think it's important to keep an open mind as our colleagues discuss, but truthfully, it's hard to keep an open mind when it's consistently been pulling one direction towards a charter this entire process and the town meeting folks have been told, we'll get there, we'll get there. Well, I think it's time to get there so we can either A, you know, come together and move on, or B, if the majority of this commission really wants to start a charter, I want to get my brain in gear to be effective in the role that I'm in. But I need to know which way we're going. And, you know, truthfully, I do understand the concern about not having Pam here. I want to make clear that any vote that I make tonight is not a matter of kindness or unkindness. I think I've been pretty straightforward with my position on town meeting for the last four or five charter commission meetings that I've attended. The one I missed was due to the health of my grandmother. But thank you, Denise. Thank you, colleagues. Um, and I'm, I'm going to get back to Jeanette in a minute. I just have to say, I don't think town meeting is an issue here. What's an issue is whether or not we are interested in developing a charter that includes some of the items or any of the items that we have discussed that have come up by from citizen suggestion. And I guess I am quite concerned personally that if we end this commission, that we haven't done our full due diligence. We were elected to a charter commission. That's why we keep talking about a charter, Tyler. This is a charter commission. And, and truthfully, and with, with respect, and, Denise, I agree with that. But to that end, the question is, do we? The, but I'm going to say, Tyler, you were appointed at a point when very few people knew about this, when you were you're you don't live in the town and you work for the town. And so 
Um, I have some concerns about your membership in this committee. And I like you, Tyler, and I think you do a good job and you pay attention. But um, truthfully, I, I mean, that's how I feel about your participation in the Topsom Charter Commission. And I, I would also like to hear from Matt Abbott, who was on the committee that suggested that we vote for a charter commission, that we have a charter commission. Um, does Jeanette want to talk before I do? Or? I'm, I'm happy to yield to Matt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm always big into getting as much opinion as I can, mm -hmm. opening them up, opening up the town and having input put in. So in the government review committee, that was my big push. Uh, some people may remember that was a big discussion point when I was talking to the select board um, to get the public's opinion. Um, and I think, I think I said it a couple of meetings ago that the public made themselves pretty clear what they wanted. And that's why we voted for the, to stick with the town meeting form of government. Um, <clears throat> I also think that they suggested a lot of good ideas. Some of my own personal ideas were suggested, but they were suggested, um, with, uh, it's been clarified that they can be handled through ordinance. And I do have faith in the ordinance process. Um, and I do think with my own personal relationships with the select board, that they would take that seriously if it was something they thought was in the best interest of the town. So I think, that is a good process to go for. Okay. Yeah. And to that? Yeah, I, with all due respect, do disagree. Um, and particularly, again, making note of um, the comments that were made at the beginning that a charter is less easy to modify, it, it's less, less quick, perhaps, to modify than um, something like an ordinance. Um, that the topics of a charter should be general. And we have all decided, and it can be reconfirmed for anybody who's nervous about it, that we will stick with the town meeting form of government at this time. But there is a real problem because we have 12 times more many people, 12 times more people in Topsom than we had when the town meeting was established as a form of government. And if you want to have a town meeting, you have to have much better, far more extensive kinds of communication. And that is one of the things that people asked for again and again. And also, that's one of the things that a charter commission can address, according to the attorney. And I think it should be addressed. I recognize that some people do feel that communication flows easily and so forth, but I am 100% certain that that is not true for all residents of the town. And um, I mean, I wrote a letter to the town on January 28th. I do not yet have a reply, not even a reply to say that it was accepted or received, not even received. So this is not speedy communication. I, of course, can take the steps of writing again to a larger group of people and bringing up the same point and asking again, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's um, not two full months. I don't even have an acknowledgement. So I can tell you with absolute certainty that communication does not always flow smoothly or swiftly. And we have 12 times more people to communicate with than we did in 1776 or 74, whenever it was that Tartar, Char, Thompson was incorporated. So, I mean, I really think the communication issue is vital. And likewise, I think the committee issue is vital because it reflects the ability of communities to, committees to do their work. And I don't think the town select board actually does have time to take it up, honestly. And I don't think they should because I think it's a more general issue. I, I think it would be very useful to have a charter. And again, reconfirming for all those who are concerned, no, 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 town meeting is not going to be changed. Everybody who feels like that's the best way to go, you've got your way, no worries, not coming up, done deal, right? So that's not the issue here. Um, but I really think there are very, very useful things here that could be and should be addressed. And again, remembering that anything done here is voted on by the select board and by 
every member of the public who wishes to vote. I don't think we should pass up the opportunity. And in the absence of the chair, I'd like to make a motion to table this for the next meeting because we don't have our chair present. I think, I'm not sure that I'm worried the chair is not here. The chair is just another member of this committee. Um, I, I'm not really concerned with that. I mean, if we want to have a full body, then you know maybe you can get on the phone and have her come online for the vote. But uh, I think, I don't think we need to, to no, hold off really another good. month because of it. The table um, is not debatable. Yeah, a motion to table is not debatable. That's correct. Um, so she made a motion to table and I'm looking for um, a second. And um, I'm going to second because I really don't want to preside over the meeting as Pam asked me to, where we end the commission that I am not sure I want to see end. Um, so I will second the motion to table. Um, I feel extremely uncomfortable um, ending the commission on the only night I'm chairing the meeting, frankly. Uh, makes me um, feel as though I'm letting Pam down because she very much uh, wanted to see this happen. I have to say, I came on this committee. Point of order, Madam Chair, yes. with all due respect, it's not debatable. So we have to have a vote on the oh, table. You're correct. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Can we have a vote on the tabling motion, please? Um, I guess I'll go around the table again. Marilyn? No. 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 Yes. No. No. And. No. No. All right, so um, Jeanette, please vote. I'm a no. yes. Okay, so it's um, the tabling motion has failed. Um, so we have Marilyn's motion on the floor still, and we can continue conversation. I would um, move the motion at this time. What's that? Um, Ed, I really, I don't I think it's fair at this point. Time. Ed, I would really ask you to withdraw your motion. I think we can continue conversation. I think it's unfair at this point to cut off conversation. Peter had his hand raised. Oh, I'm was... happy to hear from Peter. <laughs> I was just going to say that there's been a lot of talk about communications and reference to town meeting and things like that. If I remember correctly, the town meeting committee was established in order to handle communications about the town meeting and to try and improve attendance at town meeting. That was their job. Mm -hmm. And they worked on it for, I believe, a couple of years. And uh, town meeting stayed the same. OK. Um, and my concern, I came on the committee because I had some real concerns about ethics in our boards um, and commissions, not so much um, about our select board, which I think uh, is has its own ethics policy, but about our boards and commissions and, and the fact that we don't have ethics policies there. Um, so that's why I came on. And um, I do believe that can be done by ordinance. My concern is that it hasn't been done and that if this committee ends now, that it won't be again. Um, so that is that is really my concern. But um, yeah, I, uh, and actually, I, I, I agree. That's a significant concern because we have boards that set their own policies, for example, for recusal. Now, here in the United States, there is one board that does do that, which is the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, but, uh, you know, the town of Topsom is on a much smaller scale and we're not don't have the kind of nobody has the kind of authority that the Supreme Court justices of the United States have. And I don't think it's appropriate for people on committees to decide without some structure or guidance when they should recuse themselves and when they should not. I mean, so for example, if the decision is that people should not recuse themselves when their own money in their own pocket is on the table, but that if it's their wife's money or their first child's money, then that doesn't mean that they should recuse themselves. 
I'm not sure that's right. And I think it should be discussed. And I think, you know, more general policy should be made. And no, they have not been made. And certainly they haven't been applied evenly. Um, was that is one? There... Is that ordinance? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Matt, it is something that ordinance can handle. Okay, um, yes, Carrie. People it, frequently people frequently recuse themselves on the planning board and the select board. So they, what are they following? Just well, the select board it? has has a um, a code of ethics. I believe that um, I've seen it's on the yes. website. I think, um, but the, but I don't think that the boards have adopted any. I mean, if that's people think themselves really, that's great. It, they basically do it because of legal precedent. It is cases right. that say that a, a planning board member um, would be prejudiced or, or liable that the um, action could be overturned if they had certain interests. Yeah. So, so that's what the planning board yeah. and select board are going off of? The state law. Well, actually, though, um, the planning board. I think one minute to know. Carrie had her hand up and I have to turn her. Go ahead, Carrie. To me, one of the glaring points of this whole process has been there's the, the silent majority of citizens. Um, I think the majority of citizens are happy with their government. If they weren't happy, we would know about it. Um, some of these items on this list were simply on the list from one person at one meeting bringing the point forward. I mean, there hasn't been a push for districts. There hasn't been a push for recalls. There hasn't been a push for term limits or more qualifications to run for select board. Um, you know, there hasn't been a push from any citizens group for anything that's been going on to bring this to a point of, we need to look at it to change it. Um, that's where I'm, I'm coming from. I just don't see that there's a big push for any of this. I think we're kind of creating, we're taking a, a statement from somebody and we're building it up and we've asked the question and the lawyer has said, we don't need a charter to take care of it. There's other ways to do it, which I think we all knew going into the question and the answer that was the direction we were going. Um, it's not our job to make communication better. That's not part of our, um, that's not part of our charge. Um, Um, Peter, before I turn to you, I'm good. Jeanette was starting to talk, so I'll let her go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I will yield to Peter for the moment because I was thinking about what somebody else was saying and I forgot what I wanted to say, so yeah. All right, go ahead, Peter. Um, I just want to mention that I have seen um, Spikeman planning board members, PDI members recruits, recruits themselves routinely because of issues that come before them. Um, when you say you don't want to just put an end to this mm -hmm. tonight, I don't think, my understanding is that we may vote um, to not do a charter, but I believe we still need to report back to the select board. Is that correct? I, I believe we do, but I think Marilyn's motion was to, um, to not do a charter and to end the commission. Well, we would still need to, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm not even sure if a required to report. Do you know the answer to that, Mark? I don't think you necessarily have to. Uh, that would be a thinking of the choice. Yeah, because we're what I'm thinking is that we need to inform the select board that of the decision if it's made, but we at the same time can recommend that they refer these articles that we're concerned about to a government review commission or a code um, town code committee or something along those lines to see if they'll act on it. Okay, so Marilyn, I, I think I need a clarification on your motion. Does your motion, um, I mean, I didn't say end, I mean, I. I, I did not have any intention to not do whatever is required of us as far as a report goes. So, okay, and if it's not required of us, you're still, oh, I don't care. Okay. Um, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna make sure. Uh, one, one, 
One, one section in there. I the Maryland I, the only, oh, the wording just was said and the commission. So whatever. Yeah, that's mean. what I, that's what I wrote down. You said you made a motion to disband the charter commission. Those were the words I wrote down. Is it, or do you need to amend? Before you answer that, can I jump in? I just Go found the right. statute. So the statute says within 12 months after its election, the charter commission shall submit its final report to the municipal officers. This report must include the full text and an explanation of the proposed new charter or charter revision. Um, any comments that the commission considers desirable, an indication of the major differences between the current and proposed charters, and a written opinion from an attorney, basically the charter would be valid. So from that, I take that the commission probably should do a report, even if we're not doing a charter, just but it, and it could make suggestions in that if it wanted. We use the word shall. Okay. Must. Okay, so if that's the case, then we're not talking about disbanding the charter because right? this work is not finished, right? So we should, what? I'm not sure what Marilyn's right. question is now. Okay, so Marilyn, your intent was just to have a vote on whether or not to yeah. do a charter. Right. Okay, and your, your second was Carrie? Okay, no, Peter, 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 and you're okay with that, Peter. Okay, that was my intent. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought Marilyn was intending. All right, yeah, is, there, is there further discussion? Well, I, I'm sorry, I need to understand what the motion currently is. We've just amended the motion. What is our new motion? The motion is a determination of whether or not we will initiate a charter. And a yes vote would be no charter, as I understand it at this point. Is that correct? Yes, I, yeah. I think the yes would be support. The motion. Okay, and yeah, and the motion is no charter. Okay, okay. so a yes means develop a charter, a no means do not develop no. a charter. The opposite. No means no charter. Yes means yes charter. No. No. <laughs> no. Would it? Other way around. So, go ahead, Tyler. So, and I, I want to just saying, and I, I like you, Denise, but I was appointed by the selectmen. I raised those very concerns that you had with them, mm -hmm. and they still unanimously appointed me to the seat. I respect, I just wanted to air that, and I also want to just point out that my original birth certificate is in the vault. Topsum has been a home in my heart for a long time. In terms of clarifying so we can make it easier, would Peter and Marilyn accept a friendly amendment to not proceed with drafting a charter, because then a yes vote is very clear. Yes, we're stopping that. Then we meet again to talk about what goes in the report. A no vote would mean no. We want to proceed and go with the charter. Okay. Does that sorry. make it clear? Not to me. I'm sorry. In your proposition here, yes means what? No. Yes means no. Yes means to stop drafting a charter and move towards the final report. A no vote means continue this process and then determine whether or not we want to have a charter. Though I think this is kind of the straw poll that really figures it out. Yeah. Okay, so you are proposing a friendly amendment and I assume with, uh, this is, so this is a friendly amendment to Mar Maryland's motion and you are the second on this friendly amendment, I guess, and with a amendment. accommodation by Peter and the friendly amendment is to not proceed with a charter. Not proceed with drafting a charter and move towards the final report at the next meeting. Okay, so your motion is to your friendly amendment is to not proceed with drafting a charter and move towards writing a final report at the next meeting. Right? Yes, and, and that does not need to be seconded. Just Marilyn and Peter both have to say they accept it. So, yeah. and yes, so yes means no, net, yes means no, no means yes. Okay. I apologize for making a negative motion. I know that yes. turns things around. I'm sorry. It's like, Quite oh, right. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's straightforward. It, it, it happens, it happens often. That's what an ought not to pass yeah. motion is as well. <laughs> yes. So, um, uh, yes, that's fine with me. So, so, um, Yes, I think we have the motion straight now and we'll proceed to the vote. Yes, but um, Denise, please go slow with those names, okay? Okay. 
Go ahead, and Marilyn. Yes. Dork. Marilyn voted yes. I'll just repeat for Jeanette. Thank yes. you. Carrie voted yes. Tyler? Yes. Tyler voted yes. I will vote no. Peter? Yes. Peter voted yes. Matt? Yes. Matt Abbott voted yes. Is Ed on? Yes, he is. I see his glasses. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Ed votes yes. Jeanette? No. Okay, so the yeses carry um, and the motion prevails. We will not proceed to a charter and we will meet again to discuss our final report. So our next, our next meeting is on the calendar for, I think next week because of how it falls. Yes, so, next week. Mm -hmm. Do you think Pam will be better by that, Denise? I, I don't know what's wrong with her, so I really have no idea. Um, I cannot be present um, next week. That was just the, because we do the first and Yeah. Third. Um, but if we um, schedule it and postpone it. It, it, right yeah, now we, just we, we are scheduled. So it could be postponed. I mean, yeah. it could be. And we both have a meeting next Wednesday at four o'clock, which may, um, with commuting time. <laughs> That's how verbose you are. Huh? So, That's how verbose you are. Can we maybe go for the following week? Um, that I absolutely. The 13th? Um, you, you're already scheduled for the first and third, so maybe just go skip the first to and the third, third, which would oh, be Wednesday the 20th. 20th. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if I can be here, but please go ahead and schedule. I'm. That's the last night the legislature will be in session, and we may be there till so three the in the morning. Right. I'm on the time that I, I may be able to zoom in. We oh, go. Yeah. Is that April 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 vacation? It is April vacation week. Oh. That's not our kids. <laughs> yes. What if we move to the end of the month? That gives folks time to think about which of these suggestions we want to put in a report as recommendations. The 27th would be after session, hopefully. Yes, should be. Um, Put that on the town calendar. Looks like it's open. Okay. What? It's not July yet. No, it's not. But, I, it, but it might be a little warmer by the end of April. I move that we cancel the the April 6th and April 20th meetings and reschedule our next meeting of the Topsom Charter Commission for Wednesday, April 27th. I second that motion. Is everybody putting it in the calendar? That's what I see going on the year. It's going now. I might forget. And just for the purpose of the minutes, Jeanette, I did intend to include in that a meeting at 6 p.m. I realize I didn't set the time. Thank you. I accept that uh, change to the motion. <laughs> So um, I think that is the end of our meeting for this evening. I guess I didn't need to cook two meals early. <laughs> um, and we will all be thinking about whether we want to, what kinds of things we want to include in the um, report, what suggestions we might want to make to the select board. Um, and I guess we'll have to vote on the suggestions as well. Yes, Tyler. And we should vote on the motion to cancel the two meetings and reschedule just so it's official. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I took it like an adjournment. But um, all right. I think we can do that by straw poll. Would everybody just raise their hand if they're in favor of the schedule? Great. And that was unanimous of everyone present. Um, and uh, yeah. May so, I make a motion to adjourn? Yep. Motion has been made. Anybody want a second? Second. Okay. okay. And uh, you don't need to vote on the adjournment motion. Just the motion is second. Police reporting to Mesa's, not Roberts.
<laughs> I thought you were going by the rules according to Johnny. Well, there's always that. <laughs> My